Good morning and welcome to a very, very different tea and toast. It is, isn't it? It is, isn't it? No studio today. This is Jason. And that's Greg. And this week, we are here. Yes, welcome to another edition of Tea and Toast. Last weekend, Greg, we went to Sheffield, didn't we? We went to the Showmasters Film and Comic Con. Yeah, we couldn't get tickets for the London one. No, so. because it was sold out. The Sheffield one was also sold out, but the nice people at Showmasters, Greg, gave us some press passes. Why did you charge me £20 then? For those of you who've never been to a film and comic con, you won't know that they have lots of celebrity guests. And in Sheffield, they had Ted DiBiase and Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And Greg got a little bit emotional when uh, Ted DiBiase was talking about The Ultimate Warrior, didn't you? I did, actually. Well, you got really into it as well. You, you're not a wrestling fan, but you got stuck into that bit, I didn't did. you? I did. It was very good. We enjoyed that, didn't we? I did. Test. Other people there were Michael Bean, who played uh, Kyle Reese in the original Terminator film, and Robert England, who, of course, is Freddy Krueger. And we managed to grab two minutes with the very busy Chris Judge, who played Teal in Stargate. Things will not calm down, Daniel Jackson. They will, in fact, calm up. Is this the one where you put your funny interview voice on? I didn't. You did? I didn't. Listen to the first bit where you go, we see so many sci-fi programs out there. You did that, didn't you? Let's did... put it on and take a look. Yeah, let's. How did you come about getting the role of Teal on Stargate? You know, it was just a standard audition. Um, I actually, I was at a friend's house and his roommate was actually going over the lines and I heard the lines. And uh, so I looked at the script, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And so I called my agent and said, get me in on it. Uh, and they did. And the rest is kind of history. They, were they looking for a certain type of film? No, no. When we, no, when we screen tested, um, there was three Carters there to test, three Daniel Jacksons, three General Hammonds, but there were ten Teal'ks. And so they were like Asian Teal'ks, white Teal'ks, Hispanic Teal'ks. So no, it was very wide open. So yeah. We see sci-fi series come and go all the time, mm -hmm. and after they're cancelled, they often have just forgotten. What do you think it is about Stargate that makes the fans still so passionate about it? Well, you know, I think it's as popular, if not getting more popular, because sci-fi has become very dark, very, very dark, and which I think uh, in the beginning was. Uh, creatively an interesting way to go but now all of it's dark you know and and Stargate is is still that the humorous kind of underpinnings of it I think is is even more relevant now because shit everything is so much darker than it than it was you know so I, I think that's why it still holds up so well you know because I, I think people need you know, a little bit of laughter, a little, a little bit of lightheartedness in their lives, you know? And, and I think they kind of went in that direction when they started in Yeah, yeah. What do you think to the, the spin-off shows? Do you like Atlantis? I, yeah, I really liked Atlantis. Um, and, you know, and I liked Universe as a standalone show. Uh, I, I don't think it was right for 
the Stargate, you know, the world, the 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 kind of world that they create. Because it's when you say Stargate, you expect there to be kind of a sense of humor to it, and I think that's why so many fans were were turned off, and not not by the actual show itself, but they were expecting uh, kind of uh, another. Uh, iteration of, of Stargate, you know, humor intact, you know, so I think that's, if they had just called it Universe, it, it might have actually, you know, worked. That's a question, what was your uh, favorite episode to work on? The 200th. The 200th was uh, just a, a week of celebration and uh, appreciation uh, among everybody involved. You know, we had people who had worked on the show for 10 years who had never been to set. So, I mean, that week, everyone from every department, like, came to set and, you know, we just got to hug and thank everybody for their hard work and uh, we just really kind of all just celebrated each other and, and uh, all in everyone's efforts. So that was definitely my favorite to work on. We're here at the Showmasters Film and Comic Con and uh, for us, the star of the show is right here. This, this way, oh. Greg. soon on this channel is a very very special episode of something really special to me it just depends on how quick the editor gets it together I'll have a word with him if you could Jason I don't know what we're paying for um, now that's coming up very soon uh, because we got to I don't want to give too much away but we got to meet and greet Kit the real thing Anyway, uh, so that's my sort of excitement. We're doing a, a whole special on that aren't we Greg? An yeah. episode, yeah. Well, Rider special. Again episode. when the editor gets his, that's you isn't it Jason? Yes. Um, well, come on then. We're waiting for it. But anyway, that was my excitement. Now, I'm a big Knight Rider fan. Jason is the huge Back to the Future fan. And uh, sorry, I'm not the microphone then. I hope it didn't spoil anything. Um, oh, what's that doing? So we're at the uh, Showmasters Film and Comic Con in Sheffield. And the star of the show for me and Greg absolutely is the DeLorean from Back to the Future. And we are here with the owner of the said DeLorean. Um, how long have you had the car? I bought it in 2010. Did you buy it as uh, just a normal DeLorean and no, you've done the work? No, not at all. I bought it from um, a guy that built it and Universal Studios used it. So after Universal Studios finished with the car, I got the rights to buy it. And uh, is it from a love for Back to the Future for you or is it a business venture? Um, it's a love for Back to the Future but it was bought as a business venture. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've been the busiest stall here this weekend. You have not seen a time when you haven't had a queue apart from now when it's all about to close down. That's it. Every show's the same. So it's very good. It's, it's a good way of making a living. And it's surprising that it's not just people our age, it's the kids as well who were probably have been taught about Back to the Future from their parents and things like that, isn't it? You get a really wide age range. Of people. There is, again, we've got the people of our age um, down to the young girls now because I do a lot of stuff with McBusted. Um, so the young teenage girls love the car because the McBusted have used it. So we get a lot of their fans come to see it as well. Does it get used in an official capacity by the studio or um, for any promotion? I'm doing October 21st. We're over in um, Paris for five days. We've done other events that have been licensed by Universal Studios, where well, it's Universal Pictures for the UK. Were you at the London Comic Con where Michael J. Fox was there and to yes. the cast? Yeah, we had Michael J. Fox. All the car was signed by them. Um, and he knew he'd signed the car before when it was in America, but the guy I bought the car from took the signatures out. And Michael J. Fox was pretty upset about that as well. So he was more than happy enough to sign it again.
When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. about it for our Sheffield adventure at the Showmasters Film and Comic Con. Big thank you to Showmasters for inviting us. Uh, we wouldn't mind being invited again, would we, Greg? No. I mean, £20 was cheap, wasn't it, Jason? Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, that is really all about we've got <coughs> time for... There's nothing else, is there, Greg, in this episode? <sighs> Go on, then, Greg. Test. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? I don't know, Greg. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. <sighs> that really is all we've got time for on this episode of Tea and Toast. We hope you'll join us next. What's that? Why has it been there the whole episode? It's a new microphone, Greg. What, from the 1940s? Yes, it's retro, 1980s. Is, is it... test? Are we, are we, is it working? Yes, it oh, is. Are we using it now? Yes. Oh, what, well, why is it not plugged in then, Jason? What's this here? I found it in a charity shop, Greg, and I thought it looked great on our desk. Test. It's good, isn't it? Anyway. We'll see you next time on Tea and Toast. <laughs> <laughs>